We're here in Des Moines, Iowa for the Brownells Gunsmith Career Fair and here with Pete Brownell who's an NRA board member and you're putting on this uh, amazing fair. Uh, let, let's, talk about, let's talk about politics, let's talk about the NRA meeting coming up. Violence Policy Center had a, uh, had a report called Blood Money yep. and uh, Brownells was mentioned. You were mentioned by name. Yep. What is it like when you get attacked like that? I think it's encouraging that those people that are out there trying to restrict our, tr our, our rights starts to recognize that we have we're making some headway. Um, when I stepped up to be a board member, I knew that that would put my face and my name out there in front of those those people and those entities that are anti-gun, I would say anti-American. And I was really to take on that challenge. It's things, if you're really interested in, in the passion of what America stands for, you got to take the lumps with it as well. And this, these are just part of the lumps. It's part of it. It's just part of the being a board member. What do you say back to people like that? And you, know, you, you told me that uh, we were talking before we got on mic. You've had denial of service attacks on the website, sure. but you know there, there's some sensible, you know, gun control people. You would hope. What do you say to them? I first asked them if they've ever fired a firearm. They ever gone out to the range and shot. Do you understand the culture behind it? And many of them haven't. I live in a town, uh, Grinnell, Iowa, which is a very liberal Grinnell College there. And ten years ago, when I started. Uh, really residing there, uh, they didn't have a gun culture at all at the college. Now a lot of the professors are big hunters, a lot of the students are starting a shooting club because we just went and challenged their thoughts on what firearms are all about. Too many times our kids are taught these, these myths about guns are bad and they, and they keep getting hammered with that when they're growing up. So we really try to say, here's what the purpose of this tool is. Here's what's really behind all the Second Amendment issues that you may be looking at and learning in your, in your classes. So when, it's, when somebody comes up and says, man, guns are bad, you should ban them, why do you believe in this? I start to educate them about really what society is about. What, what is it about firearms that's bad? Well, it really comes down to many times that they don't understand. They've never really broken through those things that somebody told them at a young age and they've never really experimented about with um, changing their thoughts about just a larger picture. So we really I start talking about what's what's it like in a society is everybody if this is not utopia no one is going to look out for you except you that your best interest is with looking out for you and your own your own life and your own family so what are the things that you need to be doing to make sure you're safe and you're successful and you can't just let somebody else do that for you. When you start talking about that, they start to question their own beliefs. Do you have any personal stories of actually just turning people around on, on the issue? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Living in this Grinnell College area, brilliant people there, and they just hadn't been exposed. They come from an academia path, and they come from a, a mostly big, uh, big cities and big schools. So when they come out to rural Iowa, part of the culture is more than just agriculture, it's being in touch with the land. So when we, we have a couple of uh, New York City professors, brilliant, uh, they came out and wanted to get involved in the habitat that we're building on our shooting range. So we, we went out and had a little education on grasses and birds and deer and all the animals, the foxes and everything like that, which was very encouraging for them to really uh, dig their frankly, dig their fingers into the dirt and start getting involved in that. Then they started wondering what we're doing with these big, long tunnels with berms and targets at the end. So we started showing them what a, a 22 was, what a pistol was, and got them on the range shooting. And it's, it was a nice story because they, they now are going to, on their trip, stopping at ranges and shooting along the way. And these trips are, let's go to the Met, and on the way, let's take our pistols. So... It's, it's a bit of a, a disconnect when you, when you try to box people's personalities. Metropolitan Opera and pistols don't go, necessarily go together, but when you start exposing people to the larger issues and the fun and, and kind of the sport of the activities of our, of our trade, then they get it. They start to get it. We're uh, less than two weeks away from the NRA annual meeting in Pittsburgh. You, of course, will be there. Any of our viewers and our listeners who are thinking of going, tell them why they should be there. The NRA is a a band is a, is a collection of people that think like us, that, that have the passion for the Second Amendment and for the sport of firearms. It's, it's almost freeing to be there. You can talk openly. You can, you can start to plan for uh, the success of our industry. 
it's an area where you, ha you don't question what the person next to you is going to respond with. You kind of know that we're all in the right direction. We're all heading the right, the right way. There's a lot of inspirational speakers there as well. You get to meet Ollie North. You get to meet Latrell. You get to, you know, you meet these people right face to face. They're in the aisle with you, and it uh, feels like family. So it's, it's, pr it's a pretty nice industry to be in. So I would say come there for the experience, the education, the inspiration. Be there for the support of the Second Amendment here in America this year. It's a, it's a very important year to be here. It's a very important year next year. And this starts, if it, it's already started, but it's really going to be put on fire uh, this year. So I'd say be at the NRA. Pete Barron, Pete Brownell, NRA board member and president of Brownells. Thank you, sir. Peter, see you in Pittsburgh. All righty, sir. See you there.